But the early warning signs that this relationship may not work. And I thought that's, a, that's an important conversation because if you can recognize that you might be falling into a pattern, maybe you can stop it. Did you push record? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey, Silka. Hello, Paige. Uh, Paige, today, something right up your alley. <laughs> we, when we start over again, we're dating after 50, we're starting new relationships. One of the big questions that uh, the people have is, you know, is this, is this relationship going to last? And there was an interesting article at BuzzFeed put together, actually a compilation of input that therapists gave, couples therapists, about the early warning signs mm. that this relationship may not work. And I thought that's, a, that's an important conversation, because if you can recognize that you might be falling into a pattern, maybe you can stop it. Or if you've been in a relationship for a little bit of time, and it's not at the beginning, and you're starting to go, am I going to stay in this because this and this is not working? This is another big component for that place where you are in a relationship too. Yeah. Well, let's let's get to some specifics. I thought some of these were pretty interesting. The first one is if your relationship started with a lot of love bombing, that's one of those date, new dating terms that when uh, one person just bombards you, you know, with attention and gifts and this and that, and then all of a sudden it, it stops, that that is a really good sign. If you're being love bombed, be careful. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, with love bombing, when someone's trying to just give you things and constantly blowing whatever it is up your you-know-what all the time, and it's, you know, fabulous, fabulous, when it doesn't feel real or authentic and it's not organic, pay attention to that because there's something going on with that person. Are they needing to say, hey, look how great I am, look how great you are, and you're not allowing the organic component of the relationship to bloom and also it kind of puts up a wall because the person who's doing all of this isn't really allowing you to see who they really are yeah, yeah. No, i i totally agree i one of the reasons i wanted to bring that up is because i actually experienced this i right after right out the shoot you know about 12 years ago or so and it, it was like all of a sudden all this attention wow this is great <laughs> It, well, and then two months later, it was gone. You know, it's like, what happened? <laughs> yes. So I think that especially if you're back on the dating scene or starting, be careful of love bombing. It's a big, it's a big red flag. Uh, the other, another one here that I think you agree with is that if one person is obviously more invested in the mm. relationship than another or makes more compromise than the other, talk to me about that. So I know we're going to get responses from what I'm about to say, but I'm just going off of what I've seen for decades of doing the work that I do. Yes, I have found and seen that in a lot of relationships, it's the female that does more of the compromising and more of the sacrificing. Mm -hmm. And it becomes really, really outweighed to the point of then resentment builds in instead of somebody speaking up right from the beginning as far as what their needs are and not accepting mm -hmm. what's coming back at them. Um, so yeah, I see this all the time, all the time, all the time. And it can be to the point of maybe the other person is prioritized in their perspective mm -hmm. in the relationship, but they do it just a little to get by just a little, just enough. Yeah. So their partner's like, okay, she or he's okay right now. So I don't have to go in full, full tilt. I see that consistently. Yeah, I uh, where I see it or have is where the woman, the women actually are super controlling, which is just as bad. But, but it, I think it comes down to if you allow this to happen, then it's your fault, you know, including uh, being the one, like you said, who always compromises. And yes, I do agree with you. I think it tends to be the woman because we're we're mm -hmm. we're especially in our generation, we are put in that caregiver role. So be careful of that. If you find yourself constantly compromising or you're more invested hoping the person will return love that's something to pay attention to i know? think there's also a definition of what is a person's definition of compromise because everyone has a different definition of what it means and what it looks like to compromise 
yeah, good point, good point. Uh, here's another good one extreme core differences in core values mm. or beliefs, such as religion, politics, just moral beliefs. And values, yeah. uh, what's important to a person yeah. might not be important to the person that you're with. And although, you know, usually you can find a little bit of a medium and give space to your partner for what's important to them and vice versa. But when it's so different, down to you eat different foods, you don't like the same movies, you don't like traveling to the same places, one person loves sports, the other one doesn't. I mean, if it's a continual thing that there's really not there, yeah. and down to your core, core beliefs of, I know we don't say too much about it, but you know, politically, what do you believe? And what do you believe for a woman? What do you believe for a man? I mean, you really have to pay attention to that. Yeah, I actually did a really good, uh, had a really good interview, I thought, with uh, a super interesting couple, Jeannie Safer and Richard Brookheiser. I'll link to it. But they are, they've been married 42 years, very diametrically opposed. She wrote the book, uh, I Love You, But I Hate Your Politics. And after that, I felt like, you know, you can deal with this. It's not an automatic no-go. In fact, I almost want to say, <laughs> well, their advice is you just don't talk about it. You be respectful and, and you know when to talk, when not, what to say, what not to say. Mm -hmm. And that's almost easier to deal with if you have a lot of things in common. Like you were saying, if you don't travel, you don't do that. Well, why are you together if all those things don't mesh. So yeah, uh, certainly, certainly something to think about. What, what is it that you see most often? So much for decades. I see this all the time, consistently. Somebody doesn't want to grow within the relationship. And let me just explain that a little bit. If you have two people and one person is doing the work on themselves, they're doing things that can help the relationship and help themselves. And the other person doesn't at all or they just do a little, or they step their foot in, and then when things feel okay, okay, I'm coming back out. If one person's continually growing and growing and, and wanting more, and the other one's not, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Another huge thing is when one person is very aware, very connected to themselves, and the other person is not, or chooses not to be, it doesn't last, because the person who's really aware is seeing everything that's going on and why it's going on and bringing up the issues that's going on. And you can only keep bringing them up so many times, mm -hmm. right, before you get frustrated. And if the other person it chooses not to be aware or not go there because their own fears, it's going to go like this. Mm -hmm. I see that so many times. So it comes down to priority, mm -hmm. right? Prioritizing do you want to look at yourself for the choices that you're making that are affecting the relationship mm -hmm. through your lack of awareness? Mm -hmm. The key big point, and you can't do a fake it till you make it because you really have to decide, is this going to be important to you? Because if it's not important to you, you're not going to continue the personal growth. Yeah. Well, and that does, that also is taking responsibility for your actions or you know, if, the ownership. Like, yeah. Yep. Ownership. That's, that's huge. That's huge. If you feel like the person can never apologize or say they're sorry, and you you find that out pretty early on, I think, because even with little things, you know, if, the, mm -hmm. if you can't admit any wrongdoing, that that's something you really need need to look at. And with that, if someone's really well defended and they go to anger right away, and that's the response, if by the time you're fifties and over, and you're still getting really well defended and really angry. That's a clear cut message that there's so much underneath that that has not been paid attention to. Because when someone gets so angry and well defended, that's a control issue of not wanting to go to those specific conversations or discussions. Yeah. The uh, if you're familiar with uh, John Gottman, uh, the Gottman Institute. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you are for our viewers. Uh, one of the big acknowledged researchers in in relationships and marriage and that that thing. Uh, he they say that uh, with 96 percent accuracy, they can predict uh, you know a breakup or a divorce, and that's if contempt, criticism, defensiveness, or stonewalling. <laughs> that those are the four really bad behaviors. Yet they always will happen. You will always have those behaviors because relationships are messy. Mm -hmm. If that's the only way somebody 
you know, um, chooses to respond and doesn't grow out of it or shift and change, then yes, absolutely. But everyone uses those to a certain degree at some point when they decide, wait, this is not healthy. This is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and just the, the way you fight, I think, is, is, is indicative. Mm -hmm. If it's just really mean and loud and constant, you know, like what you said, it, these, that's anger issues. We're, we're, we're a little bit or should be a little bit more should your favorite word my favorite more, word should <laughs> should <right? laughs> more aware that you know we talk it out not scream it out you know that's something that teenagers do would you agree absolutely and remember anger can also be very explosive when they're not being explosive someone can be so angry you can feel it and it's like the whole room becomes this explosive non-explosive yelling mm -hmm. that just, you know, can really get to the core of you. And, you know, when people are that angry, there's a lot of fear in them to take a look at what's really driving their anger. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, one other one that I really liked because it's, it's a little bit more positive maybe than what we discussed uh -huh. is uh, one, I think it was a female therapist brought up that one of the things she looks for when a couple first comes in to see if she can help them or not is to see how they talk about their early days when they first they met. met. Yeah. Because if there's still a spark there, then, then maybe there's hope. Yeah. If, if someone's apathetic, Mm -hmm. And that just is not a memory they want to go to. And it does, it means nothing right now. Mm -hmm. Pretty much someone's already done with the relationship and they're just going through the motions of coming to couples counseling. Yeah. That's what I've always found. Mm -hmm. um, but if both start to kind of speak about it in a reminiscent, loving kind of way, and it kind of brings up some things in them, you still see that there is some love there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of, is are the issues that are going on is it stronger than the love that they have yeah it's for each other. yeah i guess it's it's seeing if the people actually want to get back to where they were you know that that that's important and i think she says that yeah she, she said you know i can get somebody back from an affair get over that but i can't uh, recreate or create a spark with relationships and how we shift and change individually and together Sometimes getting back to where you are really isn't the healthiest thing. It's just, this is where we were, but this is where we are now. Mm -hmm. Two people who've changed, who've shifted, who things have happened in our lives. So how do we take that and move forward mm -hmm. with a new kind of spark? Because that's really exciting when you find things that everything you've been through and here you are now, you can still have that reminiscent of when you met, yet it's, you know, where are you now with each other and how to take that and move forward? Yeah, great, great point. Well, that's why you're on the show. That's why you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're, we're starting to get to the end. Uh, I think one thing I think they all say, and I think you would agree with, is that as long as somebody wants to fix something, if there's a, a desire to make it better, then it's possible. But if the want isn't there, you know, I mean, that's another really good sign. What, yeah. And to uh, say something to what, what you just brought up that's important, Silka, mm -hmm. is the same old adage, talk is cheap. Mm. The actions need to match the words. Yeah. Really? That's, yeah, great. Well, I was going to ask you, was there anything else you want to say on this topic before we close? I mean, it's something we can talk about for a long time. Forever, yeah. Um, I just think it really comes down to do both people want to do what it takes mm -hmm. to be in the relationship with each other mm -hmm. because it's work one way or another, um, but it's an ongoing process of individual growth, which is great. And then couple growth. So it's a win-win if you want to do the work because you can keep going out there and dating and the beginning part of dating is fun and it's this and that, but eventually you will always have to go back to who you are and the issues that you have and the work that needs to be done. Yeah, so exactly. why not start now? Yeah, exactly. Paige, thank you. Again, I think I think this is an important discussion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you just hear a sign or something that you never thought of, it, it can help. So hopefully we had that, uh, that effect on our viewers today. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear your comments. Ask us the questions. What, you know, what other topics do you think about? What could we go into? And I hope to see you again soon 
on our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. <laughs> Bye. Bye. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too and we'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.